Ginkgo biloba. As a kid, I did vitamin B, multivitamin. It was a chewable. It was shaped like Fred Flintstone. Maybe not quite what I do now. But ginkgo has a long history of use in treating blood disorders and memory issues. It is best known today as an ask for feedback. You gotta let people be honest. And most people don't. They just leave everybody alone because they don't friend to go offend people. And if people don't want to give unsolicited advice for all the right reasons. But if you actually ask, when the pendulum goes over here, traffic, and you're having arguments and you're struggling with solving problems at work and you've overtrained. The pendulum's gonna go the other way, but too many people's pendulum hit the wall here. Ding, back to that. Hello, 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 it's me, it's Tony. How are you? It is a Tuesday and I will talk now. And hopefully you'll listen and stick around because uh, I have two areas in which I would like to connect with you and talk to you about. And uh, let's just start with a, a question that I get asked over and over and over again. And I want to answer it um, clearly and succinctly. And uh, Tony, you supplements, you got your own supplements. Do you take other supplements? What supplements do you take? So I have a list and it's three pages long. Shall we begin? And then second part is going to be uh, something I call, who do you want to be? And there's 10 questions that you would want to ask yourself. And if you ask yourself these questions um, and you write answers to these questions, you might get a sense of who you should be or who you'd like to be or who you want to be. Okay, so let's go down that supplement list right now, shall we? Here it is, page one. Omegas. Why would a guy like me take omegas? Let me explain to my take though, my omegas in the morning. Their important benefits are for your heart, your brain, metabolism, lowering blood pressure, and lowering bad cholesterol, and removing plaque in arteries. I mean, that's why I take my omegas. Doc says do it. And my nutritionist says do it. I do it. Okay. Uh, the next one is my protein powder. And this is what saved my life when I came back from Ramsey Hunt because I was very skinny and I was very tired and I lost a lot of weight. So protein with HMB. Now, HMB can act as a gateway to help keep your muscles in balance by slowing muscle breakdown. In fact, HMB has been shown to help preserve muscle mass in healthy older adults. <laughs> that is me. It even works for younger adults. It works for high school kids. It's uh, kind of an amazing thing, especially uh, combined with uh, large doses of um, vitamin D3. All right, so... Foundation 4, another one of my products here. I'm not to sell anything. I'm just telling you the reason why I created it because a lot of it had to do with when I was really sick with Ramsey Hunt and my digestive system was crap and I needed to do it. So Foundation 4 is made up of organic green vegetables, pro, uh, probiotics, mag magnesium, and organic prebiotic fiber that support nutritional levels and optimal digestion. That's the most key part. The Foundation for Health and Wellness is your digestion. If that's working, no agita, no leaky gut, no irritable bowel, ba ba ba. That's what foundation's for. Anybody who's taken it knows what I'm talking about. Vitamin D3, what do you know? Here we are in vitamin D3. It helps your body absorb and retain calcium, critical for building bone and immune support. I like these things. That's why I take it. All right. Uh, vitamin B, not D, but now B. B vitamins have a direct impact on your energy levels for sure. Brain function, zippity doo da day, and cell metabolism. Vitamin, e, vitamin B complex may help prevent infections and help support or promote cell health. Vitamin B. You don't take any supplements. You're working out really hard. You got stress. You should do these things as I do. Magnesium. Or you don't have to. You can do what you want to do, man. I'm just telling you what I do. This is what I do. Magnesium, supporting muscle and nerve function and energy production. Um, chronically low levels can increase the risk of high blood pressure. Magnesium, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and osteoporosis. Those are all good reasons to take magnesium, wouldn't you say? I would say so. <laughs> Somebody's told their shorts. I don't know what I'm reading here. It's weird. <clears throat> um, astaxanthin. I just love saying astaxanthin. I used to say, I asked to Xanfin. I, I never got it right, but now I got it right. Um, it asked to Xanfin is what makes up most of my endurance product. All right, so asked to Xanfin is an antioxidant. Uh, this effect may protect cells from damage and, uh, 
astaxanthin might also improve the way the immune system functions. Um, more so than so many other forms of antioxidants. There's oranges and there's, you know, other kinds of things, kale, but this stuff is gold. That's why it's in my endurance formula. CoQ10. What is that, Tony? Well, CoQ10 can improve heart health and blood sugar and help manage high blood pressure in people with diabetes. Primarily, studies have found that CoQ10 improves blood sugar control. It has also been linked to improving aging. Voila. So far. Uh, enter, enter exercise performance. Er, very important. Heart health, diabetes, and fertility, and migraines. I never get migraines. I used to get them as a kid all the time. Is it the CoQ10? I don't know. I just keep taking it because my nutritionist, endocrinologist says, put it in your face. All right. Ginkgo biloba. I like half this stuff as a kid. I did vitamin B, vitamin, multivitamin. It was a chewable. It was shaped like Fred Flintstone. Maybe not quite what I do now. Ginkgo biloba. Uh, Ginkgo has a long history of using of use in treating blood disorders and memory issues. It is best known today as a way to potentially keep your memory sharp. <laughs> sharp memory. All right. And improves blood circulation by, 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 by opening up blood vessels and making blood less sticky. Nobody likes sticky blood. It's also an antioxidant. You can see there's a lot of immune stuff and antioxidant stuff, and they all work in conjunction to hello. Vitamin C, like we don't know what that's for, okay? It helps form and maintain bones, cartilage, skin, and blood vessels. As an antioxidant, it's another one. It also supports the immune system. More antioxidants in the immune system? Well, Tony, maybe you're on to something. Now, peak recovery is one of my supplements. And I had this created for this following reason. A potent combination of natural plant-based extracts and magnesium designed to help reduce post-exercise muscle soreness and recovery times. I'm 65, so I need the reduction of post-exercise muscle soreness and recovery times. There you go. Pregnanolone. Pregnanolone. Uh can help prevent or ease many of the effects of aging. Aging, man. Improves memory, increases energy levels, and even elevates your mood. Yay! A good mood. That's what I want. D-H-E-A. Again, my cabinet is filled with all this stuff, and I do it all day, every day. Not all day. D-H-E-A can improve skin hydration and firmness. Hello. And decrease aging spots in elderly adults. DHEA was more effective in treating depression than a placebo, especially in people with low DHEA levels. There you go. Um, adrenal, which has to do with your adrenal fatigue, adrenal glands, provides targeted amounts of vitamin A and C. Uh, Pantacenthic. Pansa oh, boy. Vitamin A and C. Pantothenic acid and other B vitamins that are critical to adrenal gland function. This powerful formulation helps support the body's uh, resistance to fatigue. <laughs> Nobody <coughs> likes that. And aids in maintaining balanced cortisol and DHEA levels. <coughs> All right. Cortisol, the flight or flight hormone. Uh, reacted zinc, not regular zinc, but I take this thing called reacted zinc, boosting immune function, back to the immune, maintaining healthy tissue growth, and increasing the antioxidant reserves that protect the body from free radical damage. Free your radical damage. Vitamin K2. <clears throat> Fat soluble volume that plays a vital role in blood clotting, bone health, and heart health. When you take vitamin K2, it helps your body to produce more of the protein needed for blood clotting. It also helps to keep your bones healthy by keeping calcium in your bones and out of your arteries. Yeah. <clears throat> um, QH Absorb, which is a, a, another supplement. Here we go. It was used by the body. It is used by the body to help produce energy within the mitochondria, the energy powerhouse of, of body cells. There you go. High impact endurance. Now, 
Uh, we're back to the astaxanthin here, but there's a little extra stuff here that I want, want to tell you about. Uh, it was designed to deliver a powerful, steady and supply of energy and support natural muscle recovery. Hawaiian, oh, this is the interesting part. Hawaiian astaxanthin, which is in my supplement, is a powerful antioxidant that can support muscle development and boost energy levels. Chloral oxygen. Three more to go. All this goes in here. Ah, every day. Chloral oxygen increases the amount of oxygen available to cells. It supports the production of red blood cells and its blood oxygen carrying capacity. It boosts energy levels. A lot of energy, a lot of immune, a lot of antioxidants. It's all blah, 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 blah. Peak Advantage, which is one of my supplements. Peak Advantage was designed to help people achieve their weight management goals, support lean muscle mass, support energy levels, and promote relaxation. Yeah, it's important. Phytonutrients, which is another one of my uh, supplements to finish. Support a healthy metabolism and horm hormone levels to help your body perform at its best, promote healthy antioxidant levels, and help to reduce... Recovery time from exercise. Pages one, pages two, pages three. Well, there you go. Do your research, see if any of that applies to you. If you want good immune strength and you want unsticky blood and you want uh, to recover faster and, and all those things. And if you want a runny nose, that's something. Um, that's, I got the vest on. I don't like the heat too much, and it's it's actually chilly in L.A. here. It's 58 degrees now. You're probably thinking I would be wearing a T-shirt and shorts and running around the beach. But no, not Tony, because he lives in sunny California. And he's got to wear a vest inside. And I like this vest. <clears throat> okay. Part dose. You know, the whole there's all this stuff about... Uh, resolutions and goals and it's a brand new year and it's a fresh start and yada yada and I understand all that and that's really good and some people will think it's baloney and some think it's important and they got to do it anyway and there's my light again and so uh this, these are 10 questions and by the way I had like 30 and I had to pare it down to these and I had to give up some and I, I don't want to be sitting here for two hours tonight um because I'm catching a, a cab in the morning uh, at 6.30 in the morning, and I'm going to go to Jackson Hole. I'm going to be there for five weeks, and maybe some of you are going to join me uh, for the Ted and Tony Yoga Retreat from the 24th to the 28th of January. Maybe you're on the fence and you haven't decided. Um, and if you answer all these questions I'm about to have you ask yourself, then there's a, likely, a greater likelihood that maybe, just maybe, I might see you in January. So this is entitled, Who Do You Want to Be? Who do you want to be? And maybe who you are right now ain't half bad. Like you're pretty happy with your present state of mind, your spiritual self, your physical well-being, and your emotional stability. Maybe these are all areas where you're, you're killing it. And maybe some of you, uh, you don't feel like you're quite there yet. But you sure would like to be there. All right, so 10 questions. We're going to rock and roll. And I'm going to tell you how some of these apply to moi. That is French for me. Okay? Say la vie. Um, here you go. How, this happens to do with the yoga retreat, and if some of you can't go and you're not a skier and you don't really like yoga and uh, not your thing, that's fine, I get it. Question number one, how will you push past boundaries and get out of your comfort zone? How will you push past your boundaries and get out of your comfort zone? And I think a lot of the people who who just survive on planet Earth, who, who don't thrive like maybe they would like. Uh, and there's a lot of variables there as to why or why not they do or they don't, or why you do or don't. Um, but anybody who got anywhere and got to do anything and to see anything and be with anybody, they had to get outside of their comfort zone and move past their boundaries and begin to take action uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, uh, relationship-wise, so that they can move past stuckdom right? The, the land of mud, the land of, of where snails live, right? And um, again, none of this stuff is going to happen overnight, typically. It, it, there's a journey here. There's multiple steps. There's, uh, there are uh, times when, you, you know, you, one step forward and three steps back. Um, but what, what is it that you plan on doing to move past your boundaries and get outside of your comfort zone? Now, just signing up for a fitness program, having not done one, would be massive, would be massive, right? 
Um, here's a simple one. Uh, going to bed a little bit early and, uh, and getting up a little bit earlier. That's one. Uh, here's another one. Um, and then you're not, you don't have to like be sweating and lifting and pushing and, and, and reinventing the wheel. Okay. Maybe one of them is adding a mindfulness practice uh, that presently doesn't exist in your life. You know, maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's box breathing. Maybe it's going for walks that you just haven't been going on and you've just been sitting on your behind, stressing out, looking at you, the screen of your, your computer, laptop, or phone. All right, so, you know, there are little steps and there are bigger steps. Like a big step for me, and I think I've told this story 114 times. <clears throat> Here comes the 115th. I love to ski. I wasn't very good, so I didn't give myself the opportunity to be a better skier because I just kept thinking, if I just keep going over and over and over again, I get better. But I didn't have any new intel. I didn't have any coaching. I didn't have any uh, mentors or teachers that I, would, that I would reach out to to show me how to do it a different way. <clears throat> and so on my own, I thought just by doing it a lot that I would eventually get better. And maybe if I trained more, like if I did more leg exercises and things like that. But the reality was that my technique sucked. I just didn't, I just, my body was in the wrong position. My feet were too close together. My arms were too far apart. apart. I, had, I had all the energy in the back of my skis and the front of my skis. I was looking down at my, my boots and skis and not down the hill. I mean, like, oh, right? And I kept doing the same things over and over and over again, working really hard, training really good. Uh, but it just became a very frustrating experience to me. So finally, I signed up for a camp and I went to the camp and I spent there for the weekend and it was up in British Columbia and I was with these five coaches only one, only knew one of them, and the other ones I didn't know. And I just put my faith in their hands, and I said, "Show me the way." And I was terrible almost all the entire weekend, but I picked up a thing or two. And then I went to camp number two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and I went to fifteen of them. I'm a pretty good skier now. I'm much much older now than I was then. So I was younger, and I was I don't know if I was fitter, but I was certainly fit. And uh, said I love the sport, but was struggling with it. But I just loved being outdoors, even though I wasn't very good. Now, I'm 65, and the whole experience is completely different because I got outside of my comfort zone and I asked for help. That's how I did it. So here's an important thing I want to say. You can take multiple actions. Action, action, like action steps. Like, uh, right? So I did all the training. And I signed up for all these you know, without going to the experts yet. I, I scheduled these trips. And so I just thought that was enough, but it wasn't enough. You know, and so an example that I could use is, let's say you're trying to communicate with somebody and you have a very finite list of uh, words that are stuck in your head. Um, uh, and you notice that sometimes you're, you, the, the conversations that you're having and the exchanges that you're having and the... And the, and the, the um, I don't know, whatever, uh, brainstorming sessions, skull sessions, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you feel frustrated. You don't feel like you're getting your point across. Maybe you just needed to add like 10 new words to your vocabulary so that you could make a better point. I know a lot of people that talk up a blue streak and they talk and they talk and they talk and they're not saying a damn thing. It's just a, they just too many details, no beginning, no middle, no end. There's no arc to the, they're just, they're just telling you everything and you don't need to hear everything. You just need them to get to the point. Get to the point, please. I get it. I don't need to know all that extra stuff. Just that's another example. So maybe getting outside of your comfort zone, maybe getting outside of your boundaries is finding a way to be more succinct, more direct, getting to the point without giving everybody every pickle, olive, and onion in this this long and mildly boring story that you're taking. That's a hard, that's a, that's a jagged pill right there home for a lot of people. And a lot of people don't learn that lesson as they get older. Don't learn it. So make a list of all the things that you aspire to be and to do and to go and to see and to live. And we're in that list, teeny and giant, teeny and giant, where you feel like I can get out of my comfort zone here. I can get outside of my, my thing. Like, like, you know, and ask for feedback. Ask for feedback. You, you know what I mean? And, and you got to ask. You got you to gotta let people be honest. And don't, and don't be too attached to, well, be very attached to what they say if they're being, being honest. 
hey, what, what, do you, what do you think I struggle? What, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think? Uh, what are some areas that I, that I and most people don't. They just leave everybody alone because they don't friend they're going to offend people. I mean, people don't want to give unsolicited advice for all the right reasons. But if you actually ask and you're vulnerable about it, then, you know, then you, know, you want to ask more than one person because maybe that one person is, doesn't have a perspective that, that's helping you. But you ask four, five, six, seven, ten people. Where where do you th- where do you see me in this world? Where, where do you think my potentials are? Where, where do you, where do you think where do you feel like, think I'm stuck or do you think I'm moving forward or what areas? You're a friend of mine. You're a family member. You're somebody at work. I, I really trust and appreciate your opinion. What kind of recommendation can you make where I can push past this boundary where I can get outside of my comfort zone? What do you hear me saying that I want but I'm not achieving? Because I'm doing the same things over and over again and not getting anywhere. Mm, right? Sometimes you go on your own. You explore on your own. You go on the internet. Or you read a book. Or you hang out with moi. And maybe you learn a thing or two and then you move forward. You get outside of that comfort zone. Maybe some of you just hanging out here will go, you know what, Tony? I haven't skied in 20 years. And I'm not very good at yoga. And I can actually afford to go on this trip and I have that time available. I'm coming. I'll see you there or not. All right. That is one. Number two. Um, are you taking things, your life, your journey, the people in it for granted? For granted. Meaning, you know, you're just sort of, are you thankful? Are you communicating with folks in a way where, where you feel like you're letting them know that they're doing a great job? Are you looking around at where you are in the world? You're not in you're not in uh, you're not in parts of the world where there's so much conflict and pain and war and everything else. I mean, a lot of those folks who survive day to day who are su- suffering like that, um, they ain't taking much for granted. <clears throat> but sometimes we do because we get caught up in all the luxury of the modern world here in the United States of America. You know what I mean? I mean, late, lately. Um, I've just been looking around and smelling the roses a little bit more, looking at where I live and my lifestyle and my health and and my wife and my dogs and my friendships and my job. Like, look at my job, man. Like, who gets this gig? Ridiculous. And so I'll get rolling in the in the quagmire. I'll get rolling in the in the hustle and the bustle and, and days and weeks and months will go by. And I don't I'm just ornery. You know what I mean? I'm not kicking back and thanking people and looking at my life and seeing where I am and being super appreciative. All right? So you can take yourself for granted and you can take people for granted. But maybe if you are, how are you going to make the old shift a root? All right? How are you going to make some changes there? And when you do, when you have gratitude and you have reflection, gratitude and reflection, just your health, just, you know, being able to look decent in a suit or a dress, you know what I mean? And not constantly going, oh, I'm going to get wrinkles here. And oh I, got this, and oh, I don't have enough money in the bank. And oh, that guy over there has got a bigger car, the nicer car than I, you know, that ain't serving nobody, man. So just wonder if you're taking, taking yourself and others for granted. And, and what, what's your plan? All right. You might want to write that down. Like, am I? Yeah, I am here and there, you know, and it only takes a second to sort of Figure that out, write that down, and then see what you're going to do, do about it, all right? And it could be a one-time act. It could be something that you need to be doing over and over and over again because before you weren't doing anything at all, you know what I mean? And that creates the shift that you're going to need to figure out who you want to be. Who do you want to be on this earth? How do you want to relate to people? How do you want to be thankful? How do you want to be appreciative of of where you are in the world. Doesn't mean there's still that it's still struggle, still stuff to do, still stuff to problems, you know, it's the broken things and unfinished things and uh, unhappy people around, right? But take kick back and uh and wonder if you uh you know, want to correct that. Okay? What else? Um So I guess I guess the next one is is uh is Almost the same thing. So I just want to read it out loud. Are you truly appreciative? Are you, are you truly appreciating the good things in your life? So they're, they're sort of similar, right? 
Um, what are those good things? Uh, you know, it's easy to categorize. This is where you make, you know, you make your lists. Left side of the page, unfinished business, not solved yet, causing lots of problems, still needs answers, haven't found solutions. These are my struggles. That's the left side. The right side is, for me, I love my wife so much. She's so incredible. I can't believe that she's still with me because <laughs> I'm a maniac. Um, my dogs, I appreciate. My home, my, my place in Jackson. You know what I mean? Like the fact that my, you know, uh, um, my relationship with my sisters, all my friends would come to my house. Um, you know, whatever. This this beautiful glass with a shake in it that I got at William Sonoma. I love it. I mean, I can appreciate that. I can go outside. That's a bit extreme. I can go outside and I can just walk around and I can look at the palm trees and I can look at the flowers and I can look at all the succulents, all the plants that I have. And I can just think, and the way, and the way you know, the, the way that the uh, hardscape and the, and the softscape, the way that all works around my house and that I had a lot to do with all that sort of stuff. stuff you know what I mean? It's not like you do a project, you finish it and you don't care anymore about that thing. It's It's nice to be able to, Make that line down the middle, separate the stuff that's still unsolved, and it'll eventually you'll appreciate these things if you get to work and you take action and you meet the right people and they help you along the way, right? But then on the side of the list, there's a list of stuff that's just awesome and great and phenomenal and fun and, and, and makes you smile. And then when you write it down and you see the list, you go, yeah, yeah, look, wow, I forgot about all these incredible things. I, I thought about that thing that Tony told me to think about, and I put it down on a long, long list, and I'm very appreciative of that stuff. You know what I mean? And then, you know, if you keep figuring out who you want to be, the list will grow. And also all the stuff on the left side of the list can move to the right side of the list because you're, you're answering these questions about yourself. All right. There you go. All right. So um, number four. And I, I like this one because uh, a lot of people just ignore this. I did. I did before I got Ramsey Hunt syndrome. I sure as heck did because I didn't think about these things. So here it is. How do you plan to nurture yourself, relax, recover, and find the present moment? Like I just read that. I want to take a deep breath, you know? Because <laughs> the past is history. The future is a mystery. All you have is this beautiful present. Now, you, me, here, just Tony talking, you know, and you know uh, when I, when a lot of things were going down, when 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 I tra was tra training Tom Petty and he passed away, and when friends of mine were at the at the shooting in Vegas dodging bullets, and then when you know, I mean, whatever, I don't have to go into details here, <clears throat> but when Beachbody just just when that relationship came to an end, you know, not the way I wanted it to finish. Um, but they felt like it was, it was, you know, 20 years, that's enough. Let's, you know, and by the way, <clears throat> awesome, incredible, what a journey. It's the reason why we're here. I, I feel blessed. But it <laughs> shocked me, shocked, like, wow, I guess I don't work there anymore. Based on some things that just they did, we didn't see eye to eye. Um, so I wasn't taking care of myself then. I was just go, go, go all the time. There was no meditation. There was no breath work. There was no mindfulness. There was no walks. There was no, you know, whatever. It, I was just, uh, I was just burning the candle at both ends. And then everything came to a screeching halt. And then I got Ramsey Hunt syndrome and I was sick for a year. And so I, I'm telling you that because I don't want you, because bad things are going to happen. Unscheduled stuff that you didn't plan that go in the opposite direction where you were, that, where you were hoping they would go. That happens to a lot of people. There was a plane crash in uh, in Japan today. Big airliner, 340 people. Uh, that hit a uh, Coast Guard plane where the folks in the Coast Guard plane, five out of the six passed away. Everybody in that in that massive airliner survived. Survived. They all got out. Got them like, like 15 seconds. Boom. They're looking out the window. There's fire. And they got out. Um, and they're not... They're not <laughs> if you interviewed them all in a year... Man, oh man, oh man, you got a different group of people. You got, you got some people who have changed dramatically, and I talked about this a little bit last week. Um, a lot of them will need a mindfulness. Probably. A lot of them are going to have to go through some therapy and, and, uh, and reevaluate their life. And uh, I had a friend of mine, this guy John, that used to, used to 
I won't say his last name, but you probably would know if I did. He managed Billy Idol, and, and Billy when I trained Billy Idol, name dropper, Tony Horton. Good God, I don't mean to be. Uh, John and Billy and I used to work out all the time, and so he was in the he was in the Far East, and my, it was a long, long time ago. But he his plane crashed, and he had to jump out of there was no chute. He had to jump like off the wing. And a lot of people passed away. A lot of people died. But he he broke bones when he hit the tarmac. You know what I mean. And his back was wrecked. And and uh, you know he it was a it was a tough tough time for him. And so he had to figure out ways to calm down and be in the moment and be present and deal with an extraordinarily traumatic event. I mean, the reason why I meditate now and do mindfulness stuff now and and and, and box breathe is because of my Ramsey Hunt thing. You know, from six years ago. I mean, last night I was having a difficult time. Just, I don't know why. I was just, my brain was wow going, you know? And uh, in the old days, I would just get up and watch TV or sit in front of my laptop and, you know, or just lie there staring at the ceiling mad. <laughs> you know, like, why am I waking up? God, whatever. And now I just breathe. I breathe and I fall asleep. Nine times out of 10. I just, you know, you know five minutes, 10 minutes, it just works. You know, and that's that's one of my 10 regular mindfulness practices. So a lot of you, if you don't have it and you have stress in your life, let me see. Anybody here? Zero stress. Mm, I don't believe that anyone does. So um, how will you do it? What music will you play? What what jacu- what uh, Epsom salt bath will you get in? What what lovely book about flowers and children will you read what what breathing or meditation thing that will you do you know you could always reach for drugs from your pharmacist those work temporarily but they would cause problems as well all right um electric shock therapy i don't know i don't know what it is whatever it is you know what i mean um but if you don't do it and you don't have a, a way to nurture yourself and, and relax and recover and, and, and be present. And it's funny that this, this is something, look, you know, I deal with a lot of stress. Everybody looks at me like, oh, look at Tony. Oh, Tony Cox, he's full of energy, he's full of healthy, and he looks a couple of years younger than he actually is. I mean, everything must be going great for that guy. And um, if you ask any of my friends, I, I have a tendency to over fret. You know what I mean? And so a lot of these things I'm doing here, this list, oh, there it is. Um, are things that I still need to do. You know what I mean? Because I want to be happy and I want to be in the present moment and I want to be thankful and I want to be patient and I want to be a good listener. But sometimes I'm not those things. Who do I want to be, right? Um, So when the pendulum goes over here and you're in traffic and you're having arguments and you're struggling with solving problems at work and you've overtrained and you just did a seven mile run. And this is all the, you know, yin and yang, right? That's yang, we need the yin, we need the other side. We have the pendulum is gonna go the other way, but too many people's pendulum hit the wall here. Ding, and back to that, and ding, back to that, and ding, and then you get Ramsey Hunt syndrome, or you get, uh, have a heart attack, or, you know, you have uh, other issues. So pull the wall down and let that thing swing the other way. And that's all the stuff that's really the easiest stuff to do. The easiest, like lie down and breathe. Turn off the lights and light a candle and turn off your brain. But we're, this, is, this is most of our brains. Right when we go to bed. Where do we go to bed? And then we fall asleep and we have crazy dreams about alligators uh, up in a palm tree eating kittens. It, it, like, what is happening? You know what I mean? Like, when was the last time you had a flying dream? That means you something's good going on inside your head. All right? So if you want less of, then you got to just chill, man. You got to relax, man. You got to heal. You got to recover. You got to relax, especially if you're training hard and you got a lot of discipline. You got a lot of work to do and you got craziness in your life. Okay, um, number five, number five. How will you rejoice and how will you celebrate? So when things are going good and you feel like, yeah, man, I need a pat on the back. 
And if no one else is going to do it, it might as well be me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, I'm talking, I'm just talking about hanging out with friends or scheduling a, a trip or, or going on a long drive with a top down if you have a convertible or, or, or you know, maybe, maybe going for a walk again. Walk is part of the rejoicing and celebration. And the reason why this is on my list is because a lot of people, shockingly, are still celebrating uh, and rejoicing <clears throat> by doing types of things that can create headaches and and vomiting. You know, um, everybody thinks, "Wow, I've worked really hard. I've reached this point. I've reached this goal. I've achieved this amazing thing. So now I'm just going to drink and smoke weed and <laughs> and uh, and eat. Just have like a cheat meal day. And then you know that that's fine. But you're basically doing the opposite of what you're of what you've accomplished. You know what I mean? Here you are, you've worked really hard and you're striving forward and you're doing the right thing and, and you, you've solved all these problems and you've got the team together and, and whatever. Or, or you've lost the weight and you, you feel fit and you, or you climbed Kilimanjaro or, or you went on that long bike ride and then, then you celebrate by, by misbehaving. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and maybe it's just a one time and it's a one off and that's how you do it. And if you want to have a big old pepperoni pizza with, with some, uh, uh, extra cheese on it after you lost the weight and you achieve your goal and your after picture looks fabulous. Um, that's one way to do it. That just isn't the way I would do it. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, you know, I, cause I'm a freak. I celebrate by just continuing to do what I do and sharing that fun stuff with you and all my friends. And, uh, I don't have that kind of celebratory, um, bad behavior. You know, I used to, I used to like, oh yeah, here's an opportunity to really to party on Garth. I mean, like it's 1999 using, using party as a verb, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Um, and by, and by the way, for, for a lot of you, that sort of works and it's, it's, uh, it's not all the time. And, um, and you feel like you, you deserve that kind of, you know, mind altering behavior. Um, but there's a whole lot of other ways to celebrate and rejoice that have nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? Just traveling and and hanging out with friends and whatever. Drinking Pellegrinos while you tell stories about the cool thing you all just did. You know what I mean? So the next day you're ready to rock and you continue to rock and then nothing, nothing gets in your way. So I don't know. It's up to you. I don't want to go more into that than that, but that's that's how I feel about it. All right. So number six. What do you want to see? What do you want to do? And where do you want to go? Um, you know, I talk about this a lot of times when I do live events, I'll be out there on, I'll be on stage and there'll be whatever, 50 people, 500 people. And, um, a lot of folks just don't, don't get out much. They have home and they have work and they have car, they have homework car and they have family and they get in the car with the family and they go hang out with other family. And that's great. Holidays, that's what you do. And sometimes you're with uncle bonehead and he says crazy stuff at the table and you went, why am I? with this guy every year. You know what I mean? Um, I think for those of us that, uh, and by the way, homebody, I don't, I don't, for most of my life, I don't want to leave the house. Don't like it here. Um, there's a f fun song that's on my playlist. Um, I want to go out, but I really want to stay home is one of the lyrics, which is kind of true. It's to get me out of the house is hard. Uh, uh, as much now as, as, as it was when I was younger. I didn't want to go out there. I didn't want to go see things. I didn't have any money, so I couldn't travel. And even if I did, they, don't, they speak foreign languages over there. They speak foreign languages in Mexico and in France and in Japan. And, you know what I mean? I don't speak those languages, so it's going to be a real pain in my ass to go do it. And that's, that was my headspace. Didn't have a passport until my 40s. And so here's the world. Here's what I was seeing right there, that little bit of nothing. And by the way, the US of, US of A, there is a lot of things to do. There's a lot of places to go. There's a lot of amazing people here. This place is like, if you're going to start, start here because it's pretty dang good. But but people don't, they don't want to try new things. They don't want to go new places. They, they don't... <sighs> What do you want to see? Go see it. Go to Yosemite. Go to the Grand Canyon. Go to New York City. You know what I mean? 
Go to San Francisco and take a picture of that bridge. I, I, I don't know where you want to go. Go for a hike. Get on a bike. Climb up a hill. Go see stuff here. And then, and then, and by the way, this should be happening, in my opinion, if you can, or I obviously, you know, there's staycations, there's things that you can do in your neighborhood, right? You can go to the rock climbing gym, you can ride a bike, whatever, down a new set of streets in your neighborhood. You know, you got to get creative. It, 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 all of this requires action. It requires movement. It re requires decisions. It, just, it requires making a plan, right? It's, it requires, you know, making a plan slash scheduling it sometime into the future so that it's there. It's already scheduled. You got all your other stuff you're going to do, and then you go do that. And then you come back and what do you have? You have a story to tell. You have a story. And that story that you're going to tell is part of who you want to be. If you don't go anywhere and if you don't do anything, then who's that guy? Who's that girl? Ugh. Boring. I was boring. I was funny and I, would, I had good friends and I played hoop and tennis. And, but it was really, I was living relatively small at that point. You know, and so see if you can do that thing, maybe even outside of the United States of America. Go to Canada, go to Mexico. You know what I mean? Go, go to Hawaii. It's still the USA. Everybody speaks English. You know, I mean, obviously you got to pay with the tickets and you got to get the hotel and you got to get the rent a car. Um, but but a lot of people are spending a lot of money on stuff uh, that just ends up in the closet or in the trash or in the garage or up in the attic, and uh, and they get a bunch get to get all this stuff, and clothes and toys and electronics and yada yada. But all that, a lot of that stuff just lives in the house with you. And if you, let's say, you took some of that money, and you knew that Uncle Tony said it's time for you to go see, do things, and go places, buy less stuff and put that money away in this in the travel in the travel account right? Just little bits. I don't know, 50 bucks a week, 25 bucks a week. It'll keep coming because week after week after week after they come and that money goes in there. And then you go, oh crap, I got four grand. What can I do for four grand? Like I got four grand and I didn't buy, you know, five sweater vests. I just stuck with the one and now I can go do cool stuff. And if you don't have a passport, I waited till I was 40 something. Stupid. I missed out, but I ain't messing around now. I mean, I've been to Japan twice already. I've been to Korea. I've been to France. I've been to Germany. I've been to, I've been to Rome. I've been to all up and down Italy. I've been all through France. I've, re I've been in the bullet train from France to, from Paris to London. I mean, I've been to South America. I've skied Vallo Nevada in South America. It's in Chile. I've been to Chamonix, Mont Blanc in France and skied there. You know, I, I, but what's on my to-do? Like, you know what's on my list? Skiing in Japan. Skiing in North Japan. Pretty cool. I mean, I'm having earthquakes and planes and things happening now, but, you know, I'm still going to go. I'm not going to live small. All right, so uh, how do you plan on, uh, what do you plan on doing? Where do you plan on going? Save the money and go do it. And if you don't have a lot of bread, figure it out here. Because those are your stories and that's who you are and that's who you will be. And if you don't do those things and go to those places and hang out with those people and meet new people, you know, boring. Don't live boring, live large. Live large. It's, it's part of your whole essence. You know what I mean? It's like you're a cool cat when you go out and see the world. And then you share that with other people and then they go too and they have those experiences and that makes you a hero.